Hi, this is PR Sundar. Welcome to Mission Options episode number 4. In the last few episodes, we have seen what is derivative, what is forward, what is futures and who are the stock market participants. And today, we are going to discuss more detail about the futures and particularly the margin money that we are paying while taking positions in futures. And before that, let me tell you an interesting thing. The first formal futures exchange was established in Japan in 1697. That is about 320 years before. And those days, the so-called allied people in Japan, they were called samurai. So those samurais were paid for their services, but not in their currency. The Japanese currency is yen. They were not paid in yen, but they were paid by rice. So these samurais were holding a large amount of rice. So they wanted to control the prices of rice. So they have formed an exchange called Tojima Rice Exchange. And they were trying to control the prices of rice. So that was the first official futures exchange established in the world. Now, let us come this side. And we already know the difference between cash market and futures market. The biggest advantage in futures market is that you can sell first and buy later because this is only an agreement. This is not the real selling. What happens in the cash market? You buy, I sell. So when you buy, you pay money to me. When I sell, I give the shares to you. Of course, you and me don't deal directly. So you buy the shares, you pay money to the exchange and I sell the shares, I give the shares to the exchange and then the exchange gives you the share, the exchange gives me the money. But in futures market, we don't use the word buy or sell because there is no actual buying or selling takes place. It's only an agreement. So if you are buying and the people say you are taking a long position, if I'm selling, the people say, I'm taking a short position. So slowly, I'm bringing you to the technical jargons of the stock market. So only in cash market, people use the word buy and sell. In futures market, people don't use the word buy and sell. The people use the word long or short. So from now onwards, I'm going to use the word only long and short. Let us say, you are going long. Let us say the company called ACC, Associated Cement Company. So that is the first company in the alphabetical order in the top 50 companies in India. That's why I'm taking ACC. The price is trading around 1700 and the lot size we have already discussed. The lot size is 500. That means you can buy 500, 1000, 1500 like that only. So let us say you are taking a long position in one lot. So the price is 1700 and into 500 shares, the total contract size is about 8.5 lakhs. So the 8.5 lakhs is the total contract size. But you are not going to pay the entire 8.5 lakhs to me. You are going to pay only a small amount called margin money. Then I am selling, but I am selling. It does not mean that I am giving you the shares. As I told you, I am not actually selling. I am taking a short position. I feel that the price will go down. I want to benefit, so I am taking a short position. So on the contrary, instead of price going down, if the price goes up, I lose money. You gain the money. So when you gain the money, I lose the money. If I don't pay the money to you, if I run away, what is going to happen? So that is why the exchange is taking the margin money. So in cash market, the buyer only pay the money, seller pay the shares. Whereas in futures market, the buyer also pay the money to the exchange, seller also pay the money to the exchange. And that is called margin money. All over the world, the margin money is calculated as a percentage of the contract size and which is called span margin. Span is the short form for standard portfolio analysis. So they do the standard portfolio analysis of the risk that you carry and they decide the margin that is called span margin. But in India, in addition to the span margin, the exchanges also charge exposure margin. So 
we have to pay both the margin money to the exchange. The interesting is that buyer also pay the money to the exchange and seller also pay the margin money to the exchange. And I'm going to show you a live example and how much margin money we are going to pay. Okay, if you go to Google and type zero the margin calculator and search, you will get the f and margin calculator of zero the here. And here, if you look at the futures, NFO stands for NSC Futures and Options. We are talking about futures. We are talking about ACC. The lot size is 500. You want to buy, you click. You want to buy, your span margin is 1,46,940. And exposure margin is 29,000. So the total you have to pay 1,76,000. If you want to pay the full money in cash market, it's going to be 8.5 lakhs. Whereas the same number of shares you are actually buying in futures market, where you are paying only 1,76,000, which is almost one fifth of the money. But here, instead of buy, use the word sell. You first, you have to clear this. So the same thing, ACC, instead of buying, you sell, you still have to pay the same margin money. So whether you buy or sell, you still have to pay the same margin money to the exchange. In zero the margin calculator, and you click on this button, equity features, so you will be able to see the margins for each stock. ACC, the margin is about 21%. This is span margin plus exposure margin put together. Adani Enterprise is 47%. So like that, if you choose any stock you want to do, you can see Ashok Leyland is 35%. So you can see the margin money changes. Margin money is not same percentage for all the stocks. So depending upon the volatility of the stock, the span margin changes. But exposure margin remains the same. For all the index futures, the exposure margin is 2%, whereas for all the stock futures, the exposure margin is 3.5%. But span margin, depending upon the volatility, it keeps changing. So in this episode, what you have learned so far, if you are taking, if you are buying, it is known as taking a long position. If you are selling, it is known as short position. Both person taking long position as well as short position will have to pay a margin money to the stock exchange until the end of the contract or until you close the contract. And that margin money consists of span margin and exposure margin. Very rarely the exchange may come out with some additional margin also. That's also possible. But generally, it is span margin and exposure margin. Span margin keep changing from stock to stock. And even for the same stock also, as and when there is a volatility change, they change the percentage. Whereas the exposure margin remains the same. For the index futures, it is 2%. For stock futures, it is 3.5%. So this is the margin money we are giving to the exchange. That is just like a security deposit in case we default and the exchange can pay to the counterparty. In addition to that, every day the settlement will happen and every day if you make 10,000 profit, then that means I am losing 10,000. So I have to pay 10,000 to the exchange and the exchange will pay that 10,000 to you. And if you gain, you will receive the money. If you lose, you have to pay the money on a day-to-day -day basis and that is called M to M loss or profit, mark to market profit or loss. And as I explained last time in futures episode, at the end of the expiry, you have to buy the shares from me and I have to give the delivery of shares to you and that is called physical delivery. But most of the people who are playing in futures, they don't have any intention of taking delivery or they don't have any intention of giving the delivery. As long as you square up your position. Square up your position means taking a counter trade. Let us say you have taken a long position, then before the expiry, you take a short position. So 
that is called counter position that is called squaring up the position. So as long as you are squaring up your position before the expiry then there is no need for any physical delivery. So therefore futures mostly people use for speculative purpose only and futures trading is a very very high risk and high reward trades and that is why I always say if you are trading in futures you have got no futures and trading in options you have got plenty of options. I think we have covered forwards and futures enough and our next episode we will start talking about options. Thank you for watching.